Well, me, <clears throat> me and Annabelle's ready for day two of our reading of Advent. Uh, Annabelle's right here. If you can see her or not. Anyway, she's my baby. Day two, why would he come? Christ himself was like God and everything, but he was, but he gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became like a servant. And that's Philippians 2, 6 7 through 7 NCV. And again, I'm reading from uh, this book. Why? Why did Jesus tra travel so far? I was asking myself that question when I spotted the squirrels outside my window. A family of black-tailed squirrels made his home amid the roofs of the tree north of my office. They watched me peck the keyboard. I watched them store their nuts and climb the trunk. We're mutually amused. But I never considered becoming one of them. The squirrel, the squirrel world holds no appeal to me. Give up the Rocky Mountains, bass fishing, weddings, and laughter for a hole in the ground and dirty nuts. Count me out, but count Jesus in. What a world he left. Our classiest mansion would have been a tree trunk to him. Earth's finest cuisine would be walnuts on heaven's table. And the idea of becoming a squirrel with claws and a furry tail, it's nothing compared to God becoming a one-celled embryo and entering the womb of Mary. But he did. The God of the universe was born into the poverty of a peasant and spent his first night in a cow feeds trough. The God of the universe left the glory of heaven and moved into our neighborhood. Who could have imagined he would do such a thing? Why? He loves to be with the ones he loves. Dr. Maxwell Maltz tells a remarkable story of love like this. A man had been burned and disfigured in a fire while attempting to save his parents from a burning house, but he couldn't get to them. They perished. He mistakenly interpreted his pain as God's punishment. The man would not let anyone see him, not even his wife. She went to Dr. Maltz, a plastic surgeon, for help. He told her not to worry. I can restore his face. The wife was unenthused. Her husband had repeatedly refused any help. She knew he would again. Then why her visit? I want you to disfigure my face so that I can be like him. If I can share his pain, maybe he'll let me back in his life. Dr. Maltz was shocked. He denied her request, but was so moved by her love that he went to speak with her husband. Knocking on the man's bedroom door, he called loudly. I'm a plastic surgeon and I can restore your face. No response. Please come out. Again, there was no answer. Still speaking through the door, Dr. Maltz told the man of his wife's proposal. She wants me to disfigure her face, to make her face like yours, and hope that you will let her back into your life. That's how much she loves you. There was a brief moment of silence, and then, ever so slowly, the doorknob began to turn. The way the woman felt for her husband is the way God feels about us. But he did more than make the offer. He took on our face, our disfigurement. He became like us. Just look at the places he was willing to go. Feed troughs, carpentry shops, badlands, and cemeteries. The places he went to reach us shows how far he would go to touch us. He loves to be with the one he loves. That's from Next Door Savior. Let us pray. Great God of the universe, I'm amazed that you would leave the glory of heaven and become like me. I come to you with my disfigurement and ask you to touch me with your love. I want to be with you as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good morning.